Ruiz family. Today's video is going to be speaking specifically on love. Four letter word that literally fuels everything. So uh, I asked the question, what is love? Where is love? And we're gonna build on that right now. Share this to a few groups. And then we can get started. Uh, thank you all for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Uh, we're gonna build that platform up. Uh, the YouTube link will be provided at the end of this video. Those that wanna catch other videos or other lives. But uh, once again, today's video is going to be specifically about love. So I'm going to share this, like I said, to a few more groups, and then we can get started. Now, before we uh, get started, I don't mind you guys, you know, dropping certain gems, certain ideologies, certain uh, perceptions of love. You know, what is uh, love to you guys? I ask that pretty simple question you know if you had to uh define love would you guys define it for me peace family grand rising good morning okay well i often realize that a lot of people want me to speak first or well, they come to these platforms to hear my interpretation of something, so fine. Okay, so once again, I ask the question, what is love, where is love? I want you to understand that love connects to a word we call energy. Because when you deal with love, you're dealing with feelings, you're dealing with emotions, you're dealing with experiences, you're dealing with thoughts, you're dealing with actions. You are literally dealing with all forms of energy, whether that is what you can call anti-matter or matter. I had a discussion with this guy, and he was just like, you know, trying to go back and forth with me, and I'm just like, at the end of the day, they're both uh, equal to their mass. So mass is kind of like uh, subduing both those things, matter and anti-matter. But let's stay on, on topic. <clears throat> If you naturally assume that love is energy, then we have learned something very powerful about energy. Energy, neither created or destroyed, transferred or transformed. So if we're now aware that love is energy, and energy can't get created or destroyed, meaning it's here, you're born into love. You're gonna die and then be born right back into love. So love is the emotion because it's not created or destroyed. So where does it go? It either has to be transferred or transformed. I'm talking about love. So hate <laughs> is a form of transformation of love. It has transformed itself into something completely different. It has transferred its experiences, its emotions. Maybe it wasn't love the right way. So then, or maybe uh, it didn't understand it itself. You got to understand that it's energy. So love is energy. You are energy. You don't understand all of you. So you are often confused and misguided from self. So then love itself could have been misguided and confused from self. It's a deep thing. Let's go a little bit deeper. So when you think of love, you naturally are thinking of something you love. You don't even consider love like an all-encompassing thing, meaning that you love the fact that you got fired. Could you, could you do that? Could you love the fact that you got fired? No, because you hate the fact that you got fired and you broke now, but you're not looking at the fact that you should love the fact that you got fired because now you have the opportunity to do something different. This is deep. This is how, but like I said, this is self. If you're not projecting self at the highest state, you're often misguided within self, like a misguided missile never hits its target red dot on me you know so uh since energy is uh associated with transferring and transforming 
and love is associated with transferring and transforming. Let's keep going. So then if uh, I tell you what is love, that's why I said, could you guys define it, you know? So uh, most of you guys don't want to say that you love things, but you do. You love your children. You love the person you're sleeping with. You love your car. And you really love it for what it's doing for you, you know? You love the fact that your children give you purpose. You love the fact that your car makes sure that your lazy ass don't gotta walk or run to it's your destination, catch a bus, a train, you know? It's pretty deep, you know, that you kinda love the things that assist you. But are you looking at everything as an assistance? Like I said, do you love the fact that you got fired? But I'm going to keep going. Someone brought this to my attention. Because I guess I, I, I spoke on something in a previous video. And she messaged me. And she was just like, you made me think of something. She was like, is love supposed to be like controlled? Or like contained? Like can you just love one person? Could you really truly just be in love with one person? And then if you are, do you understand that love goes through the process of transferring or transforming. So as that person is transferred and transformed based on their experiences and their emotions, they're going to emulate love different. Now, this is deep. This is what I want you guys to grasp. You guys, all right, so women, because I like speaking for women. Women, you can love your man all day long, okay? All day long. Give him as much love and affection and time as you can, but he's not with you all the time. So there's other things around him that are associating love. Whether that's his best friend, whether that's his boss at his job, whether that's his sister, whether that's his mother, they're all emulating their idea or ideology of love. So then now this gets even deeper. Do you got grasp what I'm saying? Can you really, you're trying to put someone in a box of love. That's your box of love. But what if they don't grasp your box of love because they have other boxes? They have other perceptions or cubes or stations or televisions or experiences, AKA actors and actresses living out templates of fucking love. Then is it contained to one thing? So this is the best way I can kind of uh, break that down on a deeper level. Okay, I'm happy y'all hit y'all with me, y'all grasp me. I be lost sometimes in this thing we call social media. So uh, I want to ask a question. Everyone up here loves their cell phone. Okay, this is a this is something that you grasp. Now listen, is love something you grasp? Something you hold, something you contain. You love your cell phones so much that you put a lock or a guard on your cell phones. Facial recognitions, passcodes, fingerprint locks. You put locks on something you love. What are you scared of? Scared that someone can access all of you someone might stumble across something in your phone you don't want seen but it's a part of you is it not you love it you love that motherfucking cell phone so because you love it you protect it you guard it damn so then you become like a guardian of love not like a protector are you like protecting your cell phone? No, your cell phone wants to emit information. That's what the fuck it's here for. It's a cell phone. You're guarding your cell phone. Guardians of the galaxy. You know, you start putting things together. So then you start emulating these designs. Because remember, cell phones didn't have locks in the beginning. Anyone can open up a cell phone. Anyone. Anyone could have accessed the thing you love. But now they can't access it because it is guarded. Y'all processing what I'm saying. This is all what you do with love. This is where we at right now. Let's go a little bit deeper. What if I was to take your cell phone? 
Now, I'm not saying steal it. I'm saying, like, take it. Like, you using it. And I'm like, let's, okay, what if I ask to use it? What if I just ask to use your cell phone? How many of you are on guard? You're instantly on, like, panic mode. You feel that? Like, oh, shit, feel that in my stomach. Like, oh, what if he stumbles across? Or what if I'm, like, over in the corner using it? My nigga, you're, like, right there behind me. Like, why y'all so scared? Because <laughs> this is what the fuck we've created. So, you now want us to enter what you guys consider the old ways. Where we were open. Thoughts among thoughts. Emotions amongst emotions. A sea of ocean where everything is connected. Y'all not getting me. But y'all want that. Y'all want a sea. Y'all want a body that has everything connected like an ocean. You want a body where everything is connected. That is your internet or ethernet, web. So everything is interconnected, but you don't want to be open. You still have secrets. You still have things to hide. So then even in love, you have darkness. You have secrets. You got shit you're trying to hide. And then expect me to love you? I'm supposed to love you, but you scared for me to take your fucking cell phone? I'm confused. I'm lost. And you could do this test on anyone. You want to know how real a motherfucker is? Ask to see their phone and just see how they react. Like right away. Ask them to see the passcode. What's your passcode? Let me unlock your phone. I'll give any girl around me my passcode. Facts. At the end of the day, you that nosy, you go stumble across something you don't want to see anyway. That's your fault. But I don't got no secrets. My passcode is public. You need it, I got you. Because... I don't want secrets in love at all. I've never wanted secrets in love that don't get nobody anywhere but in more darkness because I'm unaware of you. That's what darkness is, unawareness. I'm unaware. I don't know. Like, whew, you scare me, you know? So, you know, that cell phone thing is a real deep thing because you love it so much. You love it so much that you pay for it every month. I have motherfuckers who would pay a cell phone over a damn rent, over a doctor's bill. Cell phone shit is deep. But like I said, the cell phone is the biggest projection of how you love yourself. All you narcissist, or narcissistic motherfuckers who have you as your background picture, there you go. It's how you love yourself. You don't love yourself enough, so you gotta look at yourself all the goddamn time. How does that feel? It's cool. I ain't mad at you. Do it while you can. But that's it, you know. I kind of did it. I kind of said it, you know. <sighs> love is a, uh, what is love? Love is energy. So then it is here. And it is always transferring. So meaning it's transferring how you react to it. If you hold love at the highest tier, meaning no secrets, full awareness, then... Then you can transfer this energy of love to everything that you love. So you love these clothes. Well, transfer the motherfucking energy of love to your clothes. Make a motherfucking shirt. God damn it. Go to Versace, okay, and put a fucking Q over the shirt. That is how you can fucking love some shit. Like, no, you love Versace. You don't love you. You don't love Q. And I'm telling you, I won't do that shit. I'm not tripping. I spent $3,000 on a shirt and they're going to draw a big ass Q on it. I wouldn't do that. But, you know, this is this is deep. This is real deep. This is how y'all really learn the levels of self. You know, y'all love, love other things. You don't love self. Y'all don't create anything for yourself. You know, so this is why love is transferring the way it is. You know, some of you guys like to get choked by, you know, have sexual encounters. That's a form of love. So then if you're getting, sex during, uh, you're getting choked during a sexual encounter, well, you know, it's going to manifest into little boys ending up in the closet, hanging on daddy's tie, trying to, you know, masturbate. Like, this shit is crazy, but these is your kids. Like, how do you think they came across these emotions and experiences? From you? But I'm kind of going on a tangent here, trying to stay focused, because I need you guys to understand, like, bestiality. Where did that come from? It had to come from us. We're older than all the now listen, this is this is see, a lot all right, a lot of a lot of people don't understand the secrets of life. For for example, Michael Jackson. 
He had a fixation with children. Do you know why? Because children are older than you. All these children that are coming out here now are older than you. They were actually dwelling within a being while you was being in this macro being lost and stupid as fuck. Where they were essentially still within self. Still within the awareness of self before the Big Bang or the Big Flash or whatever word you want to use, you know. So they still have a level of awareness of self. Now, I want you to understand what this means. Awareness of self breaks down to the most simplistic thing. Trust. Children, trust. Because not only do they trust others, they trust themselves. And the more you trust yourself, the more you become aware of self because you're not trusting others to teach you about self. You are self-aware. This is when you get into the celebrities and your Lupes and your Kanye's and your most defs and your commons. These motherfuckers weren't self-aware. They got put on. They went through the homosexual ritual. That is a big difference. Now, want me to tell you who was put on or who did have this knowledge? Wu-Tang? Most definitely. And you know how they got to Wu-Tang? They disrupted Method Man. Well, he went through the homosexual ritual. That's how he went through the whole, you know, black Hollywood and things like that. But, you know, what the homosexual ritual is, it is the activation of one's kundalini energy through pain. So, Trey Songz has an album called Pain and Pleasure. So... Anal, anal, sex is painful. Sex is pleasurable. Implement pain and pleasure at the same time. It shoots a spark or sound. Okay, I need you to understand what this means because I, I never really broke this down. But you know, I love you guys, so I have no hose bar. <clears throat> pain would be a low frequency. You know, well, well, you know, like you know, I mean, yeah, it would be, a, it would be a low tone. You know, pain, uh, 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 like an animal, like a grunt. It's a low sound, okay? Pleasure is a high pitch. Ah, ah, like ideas, like ah, like orgasm. This is a high pitch. The sounds in your body are producing everything, specifically your thoughts, but the sounds in your body, but your thoughts don't come from your mind, people. This is what I'm trying, it goes through all the chakras. Your thoughts is the resonance of all seven chakras. But anyway, um, it is the low pitch and the high pitch that then produces what you can call um, kundalini energy. You know, because remember, it's like a serpent that spirals. Two sounds, serpents. For waves, frequencies, high and low. So this is the intermingling of high pitches and low pitches within the body, all right? Like a trumpet or a flute, <whistles> low to high or whatever. So anyway, this is them shooting up the kundalini energy so quickly that it then produces a, 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 a part or a, a bridge uh, within the psyche of one's mind. One's uh, consciousness then kind of becomes subdued and a new... Uh, Mass, that's what it is. It's, it's called black mass, but it's not black mass like uh, when they eat a whole bunch of people. That was like the second version of it. The black mass has to do with the mass that's in your brain and activating the dormant or dark parts of your brain. You have how much percentage of your brain you use, so then this is so much of you percentage you don't use. So this is what they're trying to do to access that part of your brain that you do not access. And this is how you have altars, and Nikki's about eight people, and Prince was like, you know what, I already see what you guys are trying to do to me. You're trying to associate me with people or names. So the only way I can free myself is by becoming a symbol. If I become a symbol, then I am above all these names or personalities you've placed in me, which then allows me to be even more evolved than all you motherfuckers that try to put me here. It's a deep thing. I fuck with Prince, but this is why he's a prince. I'm grateful for all y'all. 
I mean, people be like, you know, you break down real deep shit simple. This shit ain't that deep. Y'all make shit hard. I try to tell people, what is silence? Death. They be like, wait, because they were like, because I was like, break down, like, because they were like, ah, what the fuck he said? He was like, uh, he was like, yeah, because in silence, uh, in silence, you get meditation. I said, dude, meditation is like a fucking 500 year old word. I don't even think it's 500 years old. Like, you can't tell the 7 billion people in this planet uh, meditation. Silence equals meditation. I would be lost as fuck. If I was fucking in Africa or some shit, I'd be like, nigga, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't know what meditation means. I said, we got to get to the point where we could break things down so simple that everybody understands it. I don't give a fuck who you are. Silence equals death. Prove it. You don't hear the dead. Where? Where? Do you hear them? Bobby. Bobby Bello. That's my friend who died. Where are you, bro? Death equals silence. People ask, what, what created the Big Bang? I said, silence. So then they're like, okay, well, what produced silence? I said, death. I said, what, then they're like, what produced the death? Unawareness. What produced unawareness? You, self, not doing what the fuck you supposed to do. Become aware, learn, trek. Go out, experience. No, I'ma sit on my motherfucking couch and watch Love and Hip Hop. And let other motherfuckers define my life all day. That's my life. And then wonder why shit don't get no better for me. song what is love uh stuck in my head uh ja Rule. <sighs> love feeling emotions experiences action awareness how i live my life sharing you out to some pages thank you appreciate it real you one of them real ones yeah i be trying to tell people i'm really these motherfucking celebrities y'all watch they fake as fuck too at least i'm giving y'all realness Never told an, uh, another I am in love with. Love is deep. Everybody say they love but wanna hold me hostage, exactly. This is why I'm not in a relationship now. Therefore, I love thyself and beam it out of my heart portal. I really don't understand human selfish love. Well, remember, selfish is to be like self and everyone's trying to be like self but self is trying to be like others you get it so it's like you can never be like self because you don't understand self the only way you're being selfish through others or reflections so it's like we're being selfish but the wrong way we're not being like self to be selfish is to be like so to be like self would be selfish but the way we view self is through others so it is difficult for us to truly be selfish. No passcode over here. Ha ha ha. Woo. I love this. Absolutely. Uh, takes time to trust people with our inner secrets. See, this is what I want y'all to understand. Your inner secrets is everybody else's goddamn secrets. Y'all all going through the same shit. Once we wake the fuck up and realize that we're all experiencing some way, shape, or form self-hatred or abandonment. That's, this is it. These are the, the strongest primordial feelings we're feeling. Self-hatred. So you done fucked up, you might have destroyed a planet, you mad because you was part of Maldex destruction, you mad because the fucking moon won't show his other side to you. I mean, it's deep. Like, y'all don't even understand how deep y'all are. So y'all, like, angry with self, you know? I done fucking created a race that's enslaving people, all kind of shit. Lord, the fucking list goes on. Get over it. Y'all need to get over yourselves. Get the fuck over it, please. Like, it's, it's done. We're here now. All of us. Aren't you appreciative that we're here? No. No. We won't be appreciative that we're here. We'll just do everything else. Everything else. But be here. 
Passcodes, ha ha, crazy, yo. I don't have passcodes of secrets, yo. Ha ha ha, what up, Cedric? En energy, high frequency, self-awareness, yes. I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful for y'all. I'm only as good as the energy I receive. Remember that. That's everybody. That's love. Love is only as good as the energy it receives. Y'all hate yourselves. And you have abandoned love. So... I don't have a passcode either. I have no secrets, facts. Very thankful to be here now. Get the fuck over it. I mean, please, all of it, the fucking, all of it. Like, I'm just like, do y'all understand sound is the creator? So the more y'all still talking about this shit now, the more you're allowing it to still affect the past. Get over it. I be looking though, I look at people in their face and they throw these huge rants. They tell me how white people are Edomites. They tell me how fucking Trump is the devil. They tell me, I mean, I just sit here and I, and I just think about, yo, it must have took them so long to compile all this information. Like, it must have took them so long. And I'm like, when was the last time you just sat by a fucking tree? They'll run all that by me and then I'll, I'll hit them with that. Like, so when was the last time you, you sat by a tree? When was the last time you had lunch with a friend? My nigga, you becoming so obsessed with Trump, he don't even know you. You're becoming so obsessed with fucking a term in the Bible, and you weren't even there when this shit was written. I'm like, lost, my nigga. I'm like, you know what? I'm not mad. I get it. But think about what I'm telling you. When was the last time you sat by a tree? When was the last time you learned 10 laws? You talking about freeing your people, when was the last time you learned to give me 10 black law dictionary? Uh, uh, give me black laws dictionary of human. And then I'll continue this conversation. Like this is and it, and it stops them in their track because it's like you're so short lived. It's like you are still only seeing one side. And how do you expect love to be encompassed? Omnipresent. All. If we're still only picking sides or trajectories or directions. Sound is the creator, silence is death. You see how easy that is? When you don't speak up, you bring death to yourself. Death to the opportunities like that job. Death to to to, to you. You become a mourning star. It's a deep thing. I won't even get into that. Because, you know, it starts getting even deeper when you go to a few of my previous videos explaining how uh, this has to do with a being called Daku. All right, so, uh, good morning. I enjoy your videos. I have probably watched all of them. This may be off subject, but... What does the conjoining of Jupiter and Venus January 22nd signify? Okay, um, I appreciate the fact that you have uh, viewed my videos. They're kind of difficult to pull up. That's why I'm creating this YouTube space right now. Once again, the YouTube channel, uh, you can just uh, go on YouTube and type in Quentin Q Reeves. It'll come up. Q like C-U-E, not the letter Q. Um, but I'll put the link at the end of this video. All right, so Jupiter will be the child. Jupiter specifically would be the child of Venus, even though uh, Jupiter is larger than Venus. Uh, we're not talking about size. So, uh, specifically, uh, Jupiter in uh, many different, like, uh, what would the word be? Uh, ancient texts, because a couple different people that he's listed as, you know, would be Zeus. Um, it would be um, Marduk. Uh, it would uh, resonate with uh, Zeus, Marduk, Pan. Even though Pan is a moon of Saturn, it still associates with Pan. Jesus, you know. Uh, so basically, it's the child reuniting with the mother. How how to explain this? Okay, so you have uh, you have like two Marys. You have two mothers, you know, or two Marys. They gave you that in the Bible. You know, you have Mary Magdalene. Then you have uh, the Virgin Mary. Uh, this is uh, 
astrological. So this specifically has to do with uh, the Venus energy and Mercury energy and their connection to uh, Saturn and Jupiter. I'm sorry, I'm hot. I'm hot as hell. So I'm trying to like get this together. Okay, so uh, them conjoining, because like I said, I don't really do the whole astrology thing. I'm just going by uh, what makes sense, like how I, I view everything. <clears throat> There's been a raging war on Jupiter. And wars, specifically thunder, thunderstorms. Um, raging thunderstorms on Jupiter. I say war. Uh, raging thunderstorms on Jupiter. And this has to do with an expression of uh, anger. And hopefully this planet conjoining with an aspect of itself that it loves, which would be Venus, it would then allow some of that expression or rage to be subdued. Now, you have to understand that Jupiter emits a frequency out to Mars and to Saturn. So it is emitting the expression of anger or anguish to Saturn. And Saturn, of course, is bouncing off its signal to our moon and then from our moon to us. So this is how we feel the expressions or emotions of Saturn. And it's important for us to kind of connect with that, which what connects to Saturn, which would be Jupiter. But then again, Mars. So Mars is connected to a, a fourth dimensional construct, ghost specifically, death specifically, silence specifically. So hopefully Jupiter uh, emitting not anger, but more of a, a union or a, a, a connection with that which it loves. Maybe it can bring sound to death or to uh, uh, the death of Mars. So what can that transmute into? Uh, maybe us building colonies on Mars. Science saying, we are now finally rooted to go to Mars and do this and do that. So like, it has to do with us colonizing Mars. So this is what Jupiter conjoining with Venus would be. Us colonizing Mars and us subduing the anger that is emitting from the child, Jupiter, Zeus, Jesus. <clears throat> yes, uh, sounds creation. I have trust issues. Um, trust issues has to do with the disconnect between mind and heart. Like I said, uh, thoughts don't just resonate within one's uh, mind. So if you have the thought of uh, going to do something you love, which can resonate within one's uh, heart, it actually starts somewhere else, but it can resonate within one's heart, uh, you then can travel that thought up and you know, so say like, uh, let me show you how uh, how how trust issues happen. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to go play basketball. All right, so let me tell you how that works. I look down at my stomach and I'm like, damn, I'm getting fat. Stay with me. Look down at my solar plex, my soul, <laughs> and I'm like, damn, I'm getting lazy. Okay? So then I travel that thought or expression up. I love myself. So I'm not going to be like, you a fat fuck, sit down. I'm going to be like, nah, I got to go do something, you know, to work this gut out. So I love myself. So I'm going to tell myself in my heart, I'm going to go play basketball. All right? So I'm saying that in one's heart. I then call up the, the bae, call up the girlfriend. Use my throat chakra. Hey, bae. All right, so look, when I get off of work, I'm going to ball with the homies. This is what's going to happen. No, you're not. No, I need to get my nails done. Blah, 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 you get all this, 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 you know, you to my boyfriend, you know, that's your job, your role. You know, you get all these things that kind of like stop you. So then your brain don't trust your heart. You sent the motherfucking emotion up. It didn't stop at your fucking throat. It went to your mind. You saw yourself in the gym like motherfucking AI. Dribbling like you was fucking Jordan. You did that shit in your brain, motherfucker. You already went there. You already traveled there. It already happened, but it didn't. Because you let another motherfucker control you. 
You got another motherfucker who tell you what to do. Specifically, you have another motherfucker who's possessing you. This is what possession really is. Not that Hollywood shit. That Hollywood shit is fake as fuck. I don't know about that Hollywood shit about possession. This shit is real possession, real life possession. So, this is how you become possessed. Same for, I'm 14 years old, 13 years old. I come in, I tell my, my, my parents, I want to go to public school. No, the fuck you not. You want to go to this private school. Boom, boom. It's like, this is, this is the course. This is how, you, how it goes. What the fuck life gives you. Not even ask, not even sitting your child down and saying, why do you want to go to a public school? Help me understand. Let me understand where you're coming from with this. No, fuck you. Just shut up. Go give me the fucking the application for this elite private school, and this is what we're going to do. So this is possession, you know. I want to stay in bed this morning. I'm tired. I need to rest. Boss calls you. Why the fuck are you not in work? Possess. Possession. It don't stop with this, that. Your bed possesses you. You should be up out of bed, doing things productive, getting life and things in life done. But no, you're laying in your bed for eight hours during the daytime. So therefore, it is possessing you. You done told yourself all the shit you're going to do tomorrow. You done even stayed up all night. Up all night, I'm playing the whole fucking day in your head, I'm traveling all this shit in your body, and then what you do, you sat on your fucking in your bed for six hours talking about I just don't feel good. Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> and then y'all want me to feel bad for y'all? Sips lemonade. Fuck no, I don't. It don't work like that. Y'all lazy. And I'm not gonna pacify y'all because y'all want love and light. No, it don't work like that. Your trust issues is because you don't trust yourself and stay with what the fuck you said you was going to do. Trust that. Trust that if you said you're going to do something, that's why you said it. That's why you manifested it. Especially if you manifested it to the point where you actually saying something. Like talking it. Like verbalizing it. Do y'all understand that? That is even deeper. Because not only is sound the creator, we have two different things that we're affecting. You are the cosmic body. So since you are the cosmic body, I need to process you got two other systems connected to you. Macro, I mean micro and macro. And you're affecting both worlds. When you say something internally through thought, you're affecting the micro cells within you or your past. And when you say something out, you're affecting your future because you're actually pulling or going towards the energy you projected. Which I don't even... That goes way over motherfuckers' heads. That you're literally speaking your future into existence like energy. Like you're literally forging your simulation ahead of you as you speak. That's why people be like, Q, don't do this. I'm be like, so fuck up. Don't tell me what I need to be doing. You're projecting your shit on me. I will block your ass. That's the easiest way to get blocked. Telling me what to do. Promise you. Where are you uh, talking from? You got a lot of knowledge. I'm talking from self. I don't, I mean, I don't even think I got a lot of knowledge. Like, I could go so much harder. I don't even use props. I don't even use YouTube clips. I don't clout chase. I could, I could do that. And then we, but I really will lose y'all. So I'm just like, you know what? Let me just build. We go to drive. I already live far as fuck from everything. So you know what? We're going to drive. We're going to talk. It ain't that hard. I love this motherfucking lemonade. You know why? Because I'm grasping it. And this is how we perceive love. That's not that hard. That It's not. That's it. You don't love it unless you got it. And then when you don't have it, you hate it. Which is still a, a form of love. Because you hate these celebrities y'all watch. Y'all don't love them. I don't love these motherfuckers. If they were homeless, if they were if they called you and said they needed something, you wouldn't give a flying fuck. You hate these people. And you hate them because they have something you don't have. Oh, because Terry, you saw, I was, about to, I was about to end this shit like 30 minutes ago. But I kept seeing the don't stop, so I was like, all right, I won't stop. Whatever you think in your mind, you can make happen. You can either speak life or death. Well, the good thing about uh, what that represents 
is that the moment you hear silence, what happens? See, this is the beauty about the, the occult meaning of the resurrection. If I if you were in your room right now, three o'clock in the morning, all right, everything's off, no TV's on, because that's a distraction to keep you from what we're about to talk about. The music's off to keep you from a distraction. You don't have nobody next to you snoring, which is a distraction. You know, it's why men snore more than women. It's a real deep thing. Men snoring is literally a way to distract women from their thoughts. But I won't even get into that. That's a whole deeper thing. Niggas be like, nigga, where you come from? That makes so much sense. Does it not? But anyway, you know, it's all about the woman. We don't really matter here. We're just here. <clears throat> we, all right, well, I'm going to tell you what we represent. We represent a gong. We are the gong. But if it's never hit, it never makes a sound. So here we go. Let me keep it moving. So when you're in your room, 3 o'clock in the morning, and there's nothing on, something weird happens. It's called thoughts. No matter what you do to not think, you can try to turn it off. You can tr try. I want you go home. Try it tonight. Turn everything off. Make it completely pitch, pitch black and try not to think of anything at all. Try to go void. You can't. It won't happen. Because in silence comes sound. So at the moment of death comes life. At the moment. And they show you that over and over and over again. So then it doesn't exist. There's no death. It's just a representation of how you're processing energy. From one state to another. From one state to another. Quickly. Quickly. Quicker than this fucking snap. <clears throat> I mean state area. You ask me what state I'm in. I'm in Georgia right now. What about twin flames and soulmates? I'm gonna help y'all understand that. I, I, I think I, every video I speak, I speak on twin flames and shit. But I'm gonna just hit y'all. Do you understand what feeds flames? What do, what does fire need to grow? Oxygen, people. Oxygen. So I need you to understand that in order to have a flame in the first place, you have to place yourself adjacent to something else. So this is just really showing you. These are just a cult. They're trying to show you your body, but deeper than just your body, the cosmic body that we're in right now, where it was the uh, eruptions of self that created your landmass. And then it was the cooling of the air, or it was the air that cooled your mass down to the point where you can then transverse it, travel it, build houses and, and animals and shit on it. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's, it specifically has to do with, uh, you know, uh, alchemy. You know, when you, when you tap into like twin flames and uh, uh, what's the other word? Uh, soulmates. Okay, so a soul, once again, has to do with solar, meaning light. Okay, so then once again, we're talking about, uh, okay, so then a soulmate, your solar plex. Well, what motivates or activates your solar plex? What gets you in motion? What, pre what prevents you from sitting on your ass 10 days, I mean 10 hours a day doing nothing? There's something that motivates you. There's another... There is another light or soul that is motivating one's own soul or solar plex, which is your heart or your your mind, you know. So like, for, I mean, it's, it's whatever other chakra you're using. So you, a, 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 a soulmate, okay? And then remember, like mate, like checkmate. When you put something, get it, you know, mate. I mean, I mean your locks, we mate, mate. Mating, you know, putting two things together, you know, so it's when one light source comes with another light source and produces your trajectory. None of this shit has to do with other people, but it does project out as other people, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't essentially deal with others. It deals with self. Is loss of imagination, loss of self-love. Um, loss of imagination is loss of trust within oneself. You don't trust the things that you imagine, therefore you no longer imagine them. This has to do with logic. 
you have a lot you have allowed the logic side of you to uh, dominate the creative or imaginative side of you but I offer regressions and things like that to help that because like I said each chakra has a ruler so you know it's probably a contract over one's third eye the gong show oxygen air a moment of so-called death is really always life yes indeed but this is what I'm trying to show you sound has pitches one goes low, one goes high. It doesn't just automatically go up and down. There is a gap. They give you that flat line. So you have to transition death or the flat line to go high and low. This is deep occult science. They just don't want y'all to really know this. But this was like in, uh, what was that movie? Um, Flatliners. Yeah, dealing with life and death. Okay, well, I think I did the video. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Once again, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, you Google it. I mean, go on YouTube, type in Quentin Q. The same way my profile name is spelled is how you can find my uh, YouTube uh, page. Um, so, because what's going to happen is I'm going to start doing lives on Facebook, but then I'm ending that and going to go do them through uh, YouTube. So, appreciate you guys tuning in. Until next time.